calculated gamble. The governor makes a bold move to get more people vaccinated, but there is a chance it could leave thousands in the lurch. A doctor is stuck trying to undo the damage after a criminal steals his identity, then steals 2,500 bucks from the state. I sort of think that it can't happen to you. And why the winter weather on this holiday weekend could be the beginning of a rebound for our mountains. I had the day off and school was off, so we uh, decided to take advantage of the snow. And we begin tonight by highlighting a big change in the way our state gives out vaccines. We will not be stockpiling second doses. Instead, the priority will be to use every dose as it comes in. This week, the move frees up about 40,000 doses of the vaccine to give to patients as a first dose. Big picture, this move could speed up the pace of vaccinations. And I know it may not feel like it, but our state is already leading the way in the vaccine effort as of this morning. About 5% of the state received its their first dose and state records show that providers have given nearly every first dose of the vaccine we've received. All right, so here's the change. Instead of keeping a stockpile of second doses, providers will only keep enough second doses to get them through the week, and then the rest will go into arms immediately. In a statement, Governor Polo said this change is purely guidance on vaccine supply management. It is not a policy change for when the second doses are administered to patients. The state is promising to give everyone their second dose at the appropriate time. That's 21 days after the first shot for Pfizer, 28 days after Moderna. President, uh, Governor Polis said they will stop giving first doses and focus on second if there is significant delay in vaccine supply. But he doesn't think that's going to happen. Holiday weekends in Colorado, you know, always mean two things. Lots of skiing, lots of traffic, most <laughs> heading back down to the metro. Denver 7, Sean Toll, live in Idaho Springs at 5 with a look at conditions right now. Sean? Yeah, Shannon, good news. It's not snowing, and as you can see, traffic's moving pretty well. It was snowing a little earlier out west, so there was some worry that the snow that brought all the skiers up might impact the, impact the traffic coming on back down. Things look close to normal out at Loveland Ski Area on Monday. It's a good day. It's busy, but it's not busy at the same levels as it typically is this time of year. Skiers taking advantage of the snowy holiday. It's beautiful today. It really is. Some conditions are perfect. Um, the hill's not crowded because of, you know, the limited access. It's a, been a great day. And with limited dining, that also made tailgating in the parking lot way more popular. My brother-in-law is an executive chef, so he makes this Custom made chicken salad. And we got some beers and ham and sandwiches. It's all good stuff. He made it homemade. I just really like it. It's really good. The Nelson family came up from Texas for the weekend to get some runs in. We went on Chet's earlier. It was the last one we did. Even though the pandemic has cut numbers on the mountain, this three day weekend has been a good one for the hundreds heading down tonight. Ski as much as we can and then head back. And when it comes to beating traffic back down the mountain? Yeah, our flight's not so late tomorrow, so we're, we got time. We're good. I hadn't even thought about it. <laughs> but, you know, you deal with whatever comes your way. A questionable mountain commute for most. Worth a few hours on skis, even if it means a few extra hours on the road. And it's a holiday weekend, so we'd expect a lot more, but it's nice. It's still moving as long as the weather maintains. It's been thinning out, and we can only hope for that to continue. Reporting live in Idaho Springs, Sean Toll, Denver 7. And we do have a little storm system that is uh, dropping south of the Denver area, and so I don't think we'll see more than flurries around here tonight. This is the current view out at City Park, pretty sunset. And this was a view this afternoon up at Loveland Ski Area, a little time lapse. Chair 9 was shut down because of poor visibility, but some light snow falling there, and there's still some in the foothills, but most of this storm is down to the south of us. That's where winter storm warnings are in effect for the San Juan Martins, Mountains and part of the Sangre de Cristos. Uh, and down toward Wolf Creek Pass, they could see about 10 to 12 inches of snow farther to the north. No advisories here. There is a high wind watch up in Wyoming, but that's for Tuesday night and Wednesday. It's chilly out there. Temperatures in the low 30s now and just 16 up at Leadville. Fortunately, the winds are pretty light and our headlines for tonight. Just flurries for the Denver area. Heavier snow down in the southern mountains. Some scattered slick roads expected. It'll be chilly on Tuesday, but quite a bit warmer on Wednesday. And then I'll look ahead to our next chance of seeing some snow. All right, Mike, thank you. It is a holiday and the pandemic forced Denver's Martin Luther King Jr. Day Marade online. The Marade, as you know, is part parade, part march. And this year, organizers put together a 51 minute long video on the theme of good trouble in honor of the late civil rights icon John Lewis. 
we are so grateful that at least here in Colorado, in the midst of so much tension and turmoil across our country, we are able to demonstrate what it looks like when we recognize that we are still the United States of America. The MLK Colorado Holiday Commission is using this day to raise awareness for its charitable work. The commission is giving hot meals to more than 5,000 people this week. 25,000 National Guard troops, including many from right here in Colorado, will be keeping watch in Washington for Inauguration Day. There are security checkpoints and razor wire fences set up across our nation's capital, and the Army has been performing background checks on National Guard members involved in securing the capital to prevent any type of insider attack. But everybody joining the military is screened in, and for an event like this, you're screened out. And tensions are high. Inauguration rehearsal today had to be evacuated because of a security threat. Turned out just to be a fire at a homeless camp about a mile away. Robert Geiswine, a 24-year-old from Woodland Park, has been arrested and charged in connection to the Capitol riots back on the 6th. Geiswine is tied to several far-right groups and was photographed wearing militia gear in front of Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's Rifle Restaurant in 2018. The Congresswoman did not respond to our request for an interview today. And we've got you covered on Election Day. ABC News will begin special coverage of the inaugural Wednesday morning, 5 o'clock on Denver 7. And you'll be able to get inauguration updates, plus local news, weather, and traffic on our sister station, Local 3. We are easing the strain on our hospitals. Tonight, 862 people are in the hospital with COVID or COVID-19 symptoms. And that actually is our lowest number in two and a half months. About 1,200 new cases of COVID were reported in our state today, and that, too, is our lowest number in two and a half months. Fraudsters are taking advantage of the COVID-19 crisis by filing false unemployment claims using stolen identities. Denver 7 has reported extensively of the issues which continue to plague the state. And now with tax season starting, those fraudulent claims are creating a new set of headaches. Here's Denver 7's Russell Haythorn with that. For Dr. Corey Lyon, first came notice from his employer, UC Health. I got a message from my HR director asking if I filed an unemployment claim, which, you know, I said, no, what do you mean? This family physician was not unemployed, yet someone was able to file an unemployment claim in his name. It's an uncomfortable feeling. What else could they use my name for? It happened to one of his colleagues, too. And she even received the debit card from the state. The problem is pervasive. According to the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, in just the first week of January, 16,000 unemployment claims appear to be fake. We're going to continue to hold those if we don't feel that they're actually a real person behind that claim. Those most vulnerable are likely victims in a previous data breach like the Equifax breach, which exposed thousands of social security numbers. Adding insult to injury, Lyon received a 1099 tax form last week for unemployment payments he never collected. For $2,500 that now I have to submit to my taxes somehow. This is not income that I actually obtained. Experts say traditional identity theft advice applies. Lock your credit and sign up for credit monitoring. You can also go a step further and create an online benefits account with the Department of Labor, regardless of your employment status. That creates an obstacle for fraudsters because they can't easily open a fresh account in your name. You sort of think that it can't happen to you. Lion has filed reports with the state and local police. I want to make sure that the message is out there to be aware and to protect yourself. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Finally, back to class. Coming up, which Colorado schools will reopen to students tomorrow? Plus, the president reveals his plan for a garden of heroes. And Colorado's drought destroyed one town's football field. I thought to myself, toughen up, guys. Come on. So you're playing on a pasture. Tonight, the Branton High School Bearcats take us along as they fight for their real-life field of dreams. Our story is, is one of such uh, perseverance in overcoming the tough times that we're in. 